I came to a realization. October 12th, 2016. I was up around 11 p.m. cramming all my homework assignments, as usual, until my phone buzzed. I got a notification saying that one of my close friends, Connie Chen, had gone missing. Her sister had made a post asking if anyone has seen or heard from Connie in the past 24 hours. I was worried and continuously checked for updates because Connie wasn't the type of person to just disappear like that. Around 1 a.m., Connie's sister had deleted her old, her old post and replaced it with a new one saying, the world has lost a young soul. I discovered that my beloved friend had committed suicide. I didn't sleep that night, and when the morning came, I had no motivation to go to school, play music, or even get out of bed. A couple of days later, I was given a letter written by Connie a couple of days before the tragedy. In the letter, Connie said that I would become a great musician one day, and that she would always be watching me pursue my dreams. Connie's words pierced my heart and became the motivation I needed to start practicing and playing music again. Music was my emotional outlet, helping me express my pain and my passion. I came to a realization. Music is the universal language that says what can never be expressed through words. My name is David Dong. I'm a percussionist studying music education in ISM. I was able to discover a new passion for music and teaching through this tragedy. There are some emotions that just can't be expressed through music, and I believe that it's my duty as a musician to pass that passion on to future generations. I hope that one day my future students will be able to express themselves through music similar to how I do. And uh, my quote is, perfection, which is the passion of so many people, does not interest me. What is important in art is to vibrate oneself and to make others vibrate. The first step to being a great teacher is to be a great musician and performer. And when teaching students, uh, and when teaching students, especially students at the college level, a teacher has to make sure that his or her students aren't outplaying them. So my first couple of research assessments go into deeper analysis of the intentions of specific composers and instruments. My first research assessment was over embellishing tones, which are notes in music that aren't part of the expressed chord. So basically they're the notes that aren't as important, but simply add interest to music. So currently I'm playing um, uh, one of Bach's violin partitas on a percussion instrument. And at first glance, the music looks like a bunch of notes. However, Bach structured the notes in certain intervals to highlight a melodic line. So because of this, certain notes are more important than others. And just to show one example, for those of you that can't read music, if a note is on the lower part of the lines, that means it's a lower pitch. And if it's on a higher part of the line, that means it's a higher pitch. So if you notice, if you notice the three circle notes, uh, the, um, the middle note is slightly lower in pitch than the surrounding notes. So the middle note is considered a lower neighbor tone, moving down from the notes around it. When played quickly, the three notes um, that are so close together aren't um, heard as clearly and will lose importance. And this helps out bringing these circle notes. There's a jump to a higher note, creating a contrast in the range of the melody. So what this basically means that compared to the lower notes, these higher notes have contrast and then are emphasized. And what this does is that it adds interest and a clear direction to the music. So my next research assessment was over the musical opinions and intentions of Jacques de la Cluse. So, my secret? I just oh. didn't want the same feeling there on game day. There I found some of bicycle electric Advertisement. Plays, no carbonation, <laughs> crazy delicious. So Jackie's Daily Clues is arguably one of the most important composers in percussion history. And when I was um, asked to learn some of his compositions, I, uh, my teacher told me to listen to more French music. Wait, why would I listen to more French music? It's not, it's not like when I play a snare drum, which is what he composed for, where I play one note. Snare drum doesn't have the same melodic qui um, qualities as soothing French cafe music. Uh, Daily Clues' compositions were most likely influenced by French culture. So listening to French music and gaining that sort of perspective will help me add musicality to my snare drum playing. And now De La Cluse values musicality over all. And um, one of his quotes was, don't play percussion, but play music. Music. And one could compare his music to making a grand speech. So here's an example. 
So in his music, and again for those of you that can't read music, if there's a circle, that means you play there, and if there's a squiggly, you don't play there. I mean, th there's a little more to it, but that's like the gist of it. So here you have the opening statement, where you play the first couple of notes, and it's followed by a rest. And then after that, the music continues. So this can be compared to making a speech, and I, I actually phrased the beginning of this speech like that. I started with, I came to realization, and a pause, and then October 12th, 2016. So it just shows that De La Cruz were, um, phrased his music in such a way that it's not just like you're playing a drum, but it's as if you're making a grand speech. My next research assessment was over redefining sustain and the role. The inability to maintain a constant or a sustained sound is a problem exclusive to percussion instruments as well as a couple of others such as guitar or piano. The instruments that are best at sustaining a note would probably be wind instruments or even singers. A singer can hold out a continuous note and change how fast they're pushing out the air to change volume and depth. And lucky for y'all, I'm not going to be demonstrating how to sing today, but I will demonstrate how percussionists attempt to create a sustained sound. So percussionists will do rolls, which is essentially playing consecutive notes to blend all the sounds into one continuous sound. However, rolls are simply an illusion of a sustained sound, as you're not sustaining one note, but you're playing a bunch of notes to make it sound like you're playing one single note. Now the types of rolls are single stroke rolls, which is when each hand plays one note consecutively, or double stroke rolls, where each hand plays two notes using the rebound of the drum, are there even buzz rolls when each hand uses even greater pressure to play maybe even three or four notes per hand? And what these sounds work to do is to create one continuous or one seemingly continuous sound. And um, right now I'm playing on a practice snare drum where all of the notes are super short. So the buzz roll, the one where you play four notes per hand, sounds the most sustained. And this could be different on other percussion instruments. My next research assessment was over the characteristics of Viennese timpani. And for those of you that don't know what timpani are, timpani are large drums with copper bowls covered by a calfskin, or in this case, a goatskin head. So some key differences between Viennese timpani and international timpani are that Viennese timpani have goatskin heads. And, uh, and the article contained results from an experiment that showed that Viennese timpani produce more tone and get less articulate sounds than international timpani. And when I say articulate sounds, I'm talking about what makes the, what makes the instrument sound like a drum. So when you play a timpani, uh, one of the Viennese timpani, you get more of the tone rather than the, uh, the rhythm. I was also fortunate enough to be able to conduct informational interviews with professionals. Their experience and expertise will be very useful to me this year and many years to come. So my first um, informational interview was with Richard Gibson. He's the director of the School of Music at Texas Christian University. And something that he taught me was that a teacher must be dynamic and inspiring. He compared teaching students to a basketball game. You have the goal of winning the game, but you don't know where the ball will be at the exact parts of the game. You'll have to be able to adapt to each situation in order to win. Students all have their own individual needs as well as their own learning styles, and a teacher has to be able to teach it all and adapt to every student. My uh, next interview was with Joey Carter. He is the percussion instructor also at Texas Christian University. And something that he taught me was that you have to become your own best teacher. So a musician will spend a couple of hours per week with their teacher, but they'll spend all their time with themselves. So part of a teacher's job is to be able to teach their students how to teach themselves. My next interview was with Zach Shear. He is the percussion director at Capel High School. And he emphasized the importance of connections when it comes to finding a job. He was able to get a job at Capel High School, which already has a very successful band program because, the teachers, um, because of the teachers that he was connected with in Texas. And uh, another interview was with Doug Howard. He is the principal percussionist of the Dallas Symphony Orchestra. A large part of being an orchestral percussionist is practicing for auditions because you have to win your job in an orchestra. Mr. Howard emphasized the importance of fundamentals as an orchestral percussionist. Now most orchestral repertoire uh, requires the complete mastery of basic fundamentals rather than the flashy stuff seen in marching bands or rock bands. Uh, however, um, upon studying orchestral repertoire, I've been um, obsessed with perfection, trying to get the basic fundamentals perfect every time. 
but the, due to the recent tragedy, I decided to change my quote to perfection, which is the passion of so many people, does not interest me. What is important in art is to vibrate oneself and to make others vibrate. Thank you.